we're gonna be testing the Amber S5K. Small form factor, ready for high speed. Over the weekend, we tested out a few features of the camera. The frame rate, the exposure, the global shutter, the lens type, the codec, the size, and the power management. We looked at different ways to put this camera to the test. I'm an avid runner. When you think of running, you think of speed. And that's how we tested the camera. Check out the clips. When you think about this camera, you get two points. You have the frame rate and the frame size. The lower that you go on the frame size, the higher you get on your frame rate. For us, we felt 4K at 800 was plenty enough, so we stayed in between that range. 5K gives you 600 and 4K gives you 800. If you'd like to actually go higher, they have another camera, which is a 2.5, that would get you up to 3,000 frames per second. We're outside, we're not really limited on the ISO but the cameras range from 100 to 400 with an 11 stops dynamic range. So we're actually working with NDs, polarizers, just to be able to get the right exposure and the right look for what we're going for. Part of the test was speed, how the camera actually handles when these you know, rapid objects moving on screen. We were shooting like muscle groups, we're shooting distance, we're shooting side angles that you can actually see the person running. The global shutter helped a lot with that. We chose two sets of lenses. The ZFs, because they're small and compact, with our Anginu EZ3, because it was long and we could get to 250 millimeters. The form factor of the camera is amazing. For us, we ran a small HD in the back, put a battery, powered the camera and the monitor from the same battery. But if you're doing anything bigger, we had it on sticks with our Anginu EZ3 for us to be able to actually follow the subject when they're running. If adding anything else, I would add a handle on the side and maybe a follow focus to be able to actually pull focus when I'm running and gunning with it. The camera comes with an internal SSD, four terabyte, so we shot everything internal. Files that are coming out of it are Apple ProRes, so that was easy to translate on the computer if you're on a Mac. Just plug in the USB-C and we're able to get all the files off of the camera. A few things that I like about the camera are the form factor. That's one of the biggest winners. It's so small and also the frame rate. As a B camera or as a C camera that I'm just using for high speed stuff, I can put the other camera down and just have this ready. Rigging it, I think it has a lot of capabilities depending on what accessories you're able to get. Mounting points are the only issue that I had with the camera. It doesn't have a lot of uh, standard mounting points. So two points of contact are very limited other than the base. Um, but other than that, I'm sure there are companies that make the plates and make all the accessories to make it work. For us, we used what we had. For the cost and what you get, I think it's worth it, the clean image that you're actually getting out of the camera. If I was on a safari and shooting animals, I would carry this. It's small, compact. If you have more use cases for sports or cars or any shoots that you know you need high speed, I think this fits that bill. But the form factor is one of the biggest winners for this and the cost factor helps that too. Check out the test that we did with the Amber S5K and let us know, how would you use this camera? Yeah.